Kick it off, Ella. Come on up. Article 10 of the New Hampshire State Constitution is as follows. Government being instituted for the common benefit, protection, and security of the whole community, and not for the private interest or emolument of any one man, family, or class of men. Therefore, whenever the ends of government are perverted, and public liberty manifestly endangered, and all other means of redress are ineffectual, the people may, and of right ought, to reform the old, or establish a new government. The doctrine of non-resistance against arbitrary power and oppression is absurd, slavish, and destructive to the good and happiness of mankind. Unquote. My mother taught me the meaning of democracy when she showed me the eagle printed on the dollar bill. The one that holds a bunch of arrows in one hand and an olive branch in the other. See how the head is turned towards the olive branch, she explained. That symbolizes that America should always look to peace first. This seemed terribly romantic to me, and I began using the analogy for a variety of situations. The outcome changed depending on the circumstances, but the one variable that remained constant was the identity of the eagle. The eagle was always the people, millions contained inside a single body. Only the majority had the power to hurt, turn the head and make the decisions. War or peace, step forward or stand by, arrows or branch. This was democracy, the nation's power in the hands of the people. But we are here today because that is no longer the case. Our government now favors money over majority to a point where the few wealthiest citizens in our nation are being represented more than all the rest. A twisted reality that in no way resembles democracy. It is a system that legalizes bribery and gives those with the most money the highest level of power over public policy decisions, a position that by right belongs to the citizens at large. In its current position, it is damaging. If allowed to evolve, it could strip us of our liberties. I was asked to talk today about why I think my generation should want to see democracy repaired. Well, my classmates and I have just walked 46 and a half miles from Portsmouth to Concord. <laughs> to support democracy. And I promise you it wasn't for our health. <laughs> so obviously young people have the ability to participate. But why should we? I can't speak for every teenager, but I do not want to enter the adult world only to find that decisions about my life and my home are being made by a tiny group of people my peers and I did not elect. I don't want the, I don't want the money in my wallet to dictate my right to representation. I don't want to see oppression, corruption, and injustice that I have no power to end. I don't want to... I don't want a world that I have no right to change. The fear is no longer that we will face too often towards the arrows, but that we will lay both the arrows and the branch at our feet and surrender the right to choose. But we have not surrendered. Our system is such that the people will lose their power only when they allow it to be taken. Therefore, the system only breaks if we give up. My teacher and I are firm believers in this quote by Margaret Mead. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. Notice how she doesn't specify how old you have to be in order to change the world. That's because the world doesn't care if you're 14 or 90. There is no criteria that need be met in order to fight for what you believe in. And the thing is, if you won't fight for the changes you want to see, they won't happen. But history shows us that if we do fight, they can happen. 
We are the blessed posterity of a people who would not stand to be silenced, no matter how high the odds against them. If we don't start fighting now, then we may lose the voices they want us forever. I will not stand by and watch the struggle for my rights be won or lost without me, simply because I am not yet 18. This is our future, thus it is our fight. The fact of the matter is that nothing will change until this changes. All our nation's problems from poverty to pollution will remain unaltered until we demand the reform that would allow us to address them. The NH Rebellion is doing just that, universally reaching out to every American in hopes of creating equality between voters. Together we can rebuild a nation where a CEO's or president's vote counts the same as that of a normal working class citizen. Together we can build a world that matches the message the eagle on the dollar bill holds in its beak. E pluribus unum. Out of many, one. In the end, it's not a matter of how impossible the odds seem. It's a matter of how far we will go as a people united to conquer them. Thank you.